uh, I got to start photographing Kwame Nkrumah before independence. It wasn't only Nkrumah I photographed. I photographed everybody that mattered, the opposition as well as the government. Since Nkrumah came and he had another tactics, he had another background, and that was what brought in the youth. In order to succeed, he had to unite the various tribes in Ghana in some way. the first photographer to work on a newspaper in the whole of Ghana is it's enough to make you want to work more. Oh, I finished school while I was already deep in basket weaving. You know, cloth weaving and basket weaving. I, I had the luck of living in the same house as the special arts and craft teacher. So I got ahead of everybody. Because photography was already in my family. I had two uncles and two cousins doing photography. The same art craft teacher who taught me uh, the weaving just by some chance gave me a camera. I started working in my aunt's room in our house. All I needed was a dark room, somewhere where I can shut the door and nobody came in except me. studio and I did my own developing printing and uh, there was a big firm big you know English firm and they were selling the equipment and I bought the equipment how many to do it I don't know but I bought the equipment and so I took over that job an organization did it and I had to do it on my own One of my favorite pictures uh, of uh, Mike Egan, who was uh, a DJ and was working with the African service of the BBC. I like the shots I took at Trafalgar Square, but the Piccadilly Circus is shot is now iconic uh, to a point where it's being collected by people who want to remember how uh, how London was during the 60s. But it was more or less limited. You know, it's only drum, and then once I had Flamingo, there weren't many black magazines. You know, and so if it hadn't been for drum magazine from South Africa, I wouldn't have done anything at all. At that time, in the 60s, when I took those pictures, I was more or less at the height of my, my photographic ability. Even if I was sleeping and you asked me, wake up, let's go and do a job, I didn't have to think. So I could take pictures that are usable. People are more important than places. 
So I concentrated, I concentrate on people. I like portraiture more than going to a place and just taking the scene. Photography has now evolved, I wouldn't say change, you know, from one man you see with a camera and black cloth or bag, you know, and you know, one of a few. Today, everybody can be a photographer or as far as to take photographs, if not be called a photographer. Uh, I started taking pictures with wooden tripod. Uh, even holding the wooden tripod to set the camera up is different from what you do today. Today you can use your one hand to pick the camera and the tripod. But th those days there is a technique of holding it. You know, I was, I was lucky to, to have kept some of the negatives because I've lost a lot. But I'm lucky to have kept most of the negatives. So, you know, but uh, to, to have this amount of work uh, there, and then you are being quick. Apart from the scanning, you have to remember when was this picture taken? Whose wedding was it? How many people came to the wedding? Uh, it's not easy and that is what I'm doing now. I don't know when I'll finish but that is what I'm doing now. And I think it's the crowning, listen, that, that will crown my work because it will put value on the pictures that I'll leave behind. like to impart what I know to others. You know, this is something that I like, like to live by, you know, the youth and teaching what I know. 